Revolution 2023 was a good pay-per-view. AEW puts together a lot of great pay-per-views because the talent roster is phenomenal. And Tony Khan is relatively good when it comes to putting together pay-per-view lineups that are usually pretty fun. But it has to be discussed. When it comes to television wrestling, when it comes to Dynamite and Rampage, Tony Khan is not a good booker. And I don't care what anybody else thinks. In the past year, people think he suddenly got bad all of a sudden. But I started noticing cracks in this guy's armor going back to 2021. But really in the past year since Revolution 2022, you could see that he doesn't really know what he's doing when it comes to television wrestling. And I'm going to go over what that means here today on this video and explain to you why I think that Tony Khan is not a good booker. I could care less how many awards he wins from the Observer about him being Booker of the Year. They might as well have called those the AEW Awards. The fact that John Moxley won Wrestler of the Year over Roman Reigns is insanity, if you ask me. But... Let's move that aside for a minute. Let's look at Tony Khan objectively. The problem with Dynamite is that the numbers keep dwindling down. Almost every week there's a loss in audience. People tune out. They don't care. And this is because Tony Khan is not really good at booking a television show. His strengths are elsewhere. Now, if AEW ran like New Japan where you had a few shows every month, maybe three or four, or you had house shows, I'm sure he'd be fine. But when it comes to a weekly television show, the way that those shows are put together is completely different than, you know, a pay-per-view or a house show. Now, I'm going to discuss the pros and cons here. Well, really, we're going to discuss why I don't think he's a good booker. So first of all, and this has been prevalent for quite some time, but I think... Uh, it needs to be discussed now because now others are finally talking about it. With Revolution's build, he didn't even start the build to some of the matches until the last two or three weeks before the pay-per-view. Now, that to me is a problem because yes, you can do that for a couple matches on the undercard, but there were some major feuds and major feud blow-offs that he didn't even tease until near the end. House of Black versus The Elite and Jungle Boy versus Christian. The Jungle Boy Christian thing should have been a, an ongoing weekly television thing until the pay-per-view. But instead, you've got Jungle Boy teaming with Hook and you've got Christian nowhere to be found. I know Christian was injured. Why couldn't he cut promos? Why couldn't he cut promos? Like, you know, you go to his house, you record, let's say, six promos and you intersperse them on Dynamite every week or two. Then it keeps the feud alive in the fans' eyes. This is obvious to me. Then you've got this story where you've got Brian Danielson trying to beat a number of different guys before he faces MJF. Now, I like that angle. And I like their dichotomy. And the match was certainly great. But it didn't really lend itself to compelling week-to-week -week television. And the problem is that Dynamite is just not good at having interesting angles. TK likes to book wrestling matches. He wants to differentiate himself from WWE by focusing on the in-ring product. And I get it. And there's nothing wrong with that. The issue is that when you're doing weekly television in the U.S. market, you have to appeal to the fans who aren't hardcore fans. And really, this became a problem after All Out last year. Nowhere on television did they ever explain what happened to CM Punk and why the Elite were stripped of the trio's titles. So if you weren't on the internet, if you didn't see the scrum or hear about what happened, you had no idea what the story is. And to this day, AEW themselves have not commented on what the actual story is. This is a problem. It's a major issue a lot of folks have taken, you know, TK to task for. It didn't make sense. Even when you had little videos showing the elite getting erased, building up to their big return... It's like, as a fan of AEW who's on the internet, you probably figured out what was going on. You probably knew the story, but what if you're a casual? And not everybody knows everything. And I think Khan assumes that everyone knows everything. WWE does an overabundance of video packages. 
They do too many sometimes. AEW does not do enough to the point where I've had friends come over and watch AEW uh, pay-per-views with me and not have a clue what's going on in the main event. No idea about the backstory. No idea how we got here. This became a problem with like Kenny Omega Hangman Page because they didn't tell us anything. And that's a rich story that has gone on for years. For years. Besides that, their story went and even went beyond AEW into the Ring of Honor era. And now that Khan has all that footage, why are we not seeing it? I thought that was pretty weak. I thought the Samoa Joe and Wardlow stuff was kind of weak. Going into the pay-per-view. And this week, once again, showed his weaknesses because Dynamite opens up and we have this long match with Orange Cassidy and Jay Lethal. He has this thing where he likes to open Dynamite with these long matches, probably for Dave Meltzer. And that needs to stop because the opening segment of Dynamite should set you up for the rest of the show. This is classic wrestling booking that even the Monday Night Wars did. And no, you don't have to do it every week. But the fact that we didn't see MJF until about 47 minutes into the show, the world champion, that's dumb, bro. That's dumb. And I like what they did with MJF and Brian with those little videos. That should have opened the show. But it just didn't. Very unusual. Also, how can this guy be Booker of the Year if at least once a week, if not multiple times a week, he books the same angle? There's an interview going on in the back with someone and it gets interrupted. This happens every freaking week. You know what? I don't like what you said. So I challenge you to a match this Friday night on Rampage on TNT. How can you be Booker of the Year when you run the same angle every week? How is that in any way creative? Your job as a booker is not just to put together the best matches and the best cards. It's to have some creativity in there. And when you look at the best feuds in AEW history, there's two that come to mind. Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page. And that was stuff that had gone on even before the full gear match, even before AEW, that AEW did a piss poor job of explaining to the casual audience. And a lot of that was their own history because they have real history as friends. And of course, CM Punk versus MJF, which is two guys who are peak promo guys talking it out every week. To be honest, I think MJF versus CM Punk is the best feud in AEW history. You know, and it, it was supposed to keep going. And maybe it will because there's rumors of Punk coming back. But either way, that's the two best things that TK put together that AEW presented. And I understand he likes to book wrestling matches. I get it. But for your television show, you need more angles. And also, the thing about television wrestling, live TV wrestling, is you want it to be unpredictable. The way that they have like Sami Zayn show up with his hoodie on Raw out of nowhere, that level of unpredictability is what made wrestling so fun back in the day. But when you watch Dynamite, for most of the matches, you know who's going to win, you know how they're going to win, and you know where it's going. And there's nothing wrong with having like one-sided matches or predictable matches, but when you have a television show that's so damn predictable... People don't want to stick around. I remember the first big example of this was that John Moxley, Kyle O'Reilly. Well, not the first, but one of the big ones. The John Moxley, Kyle O'Reilly match from last summer. Literally nobody on the face of the planet thought that Kyle O'Reilly could have won. Was the match good? Sure. Sure it was. Sure it was. But good matches don't draw on television. Angles do. Angles that lead to matches. They have to give us a reason to care. And far too often, the only reason to care is, I challenge you to a match this Friday night on Rampage on TNT. Every fucking week. Sometimes, there was an episode of Dynamite, dude, I forget when it was, where they did this like five times in one episode. How can TK be Booker of the Year if he does the same angle multiple times? Promo interruptions in the back multiple times. We need to get your best talkers and put them in the ring in front of a crowd and actually elicit a reaction and build to a match. You don't have to announce all your matches on Twitter days before. You don't have to do that. He does it. 
You announce some of the matches, but you could have the matches organically develop on the show, which is what they used to do back in the day. Even through the Ruthless Aggression era, which was beyond the Monday Night War, they did it then. And I understand that some people like this. I don't think it works. I think that wrestling fans who first got into AEW, a lot of them were, were obviously NXT fans and, and lapsed WWE fans that wanted an alternative product. And I'm glad AEW exists because it's giving a lot of guys work and it's a good, solid alternative to WWE. But you need a bit more sizzle to your stake. They've got a great roster. The AEW roster is phenomenal. No argument there. But it's also too big. You've got three hours of television every week. And I'm not including Dark or Dark Elevation because nobody but the most hardcore AEW fans watch it. I love professional wrestling. I consume a lot of pro wrestling every week. And even I don't watch freaking Dark and Dark Elevation. Why would I? It's a waste of time. To me, it's a waste of time. Nothing interesting ever happens on those shows. And now we have the Ring of Honor show that Khan is also booking. And he's trying a different style on there that might fit more for that audience. But really, are people really going to get that invested in ROH? I don't know. I don't think so. It's just another wrestling company. It's more wrestling. We've already got five hours of WWE every week, not including pay-per-views. Three hours of AEW, you've got Impact, and actually, I didn't even include NXT. Seven hours of WWE. WWE has so much wrestling on television, and AEW has a gigantic roster and just not enough TV time, so I'm glad that some guys are being moved over to Ring of Honor because at least it gives them something to do. But my God, there have been so many weeks where Dynamite has just been dull and boring and uneventful. Nothing like surprising happens. The show doesn't feel unpredictable. What made Nitro and Raw a success during the period of the late 90s was the fact the show felt spontaneous and unpredictable. And you have to think outside the box with your ideas. You have to do that. And I just don't think that Khan thinks outside the box. It's very formulaic. It's very played out. You know what I mean? It's just stuff that... It, it, it's so boring sometimes from like a spice standpoint. You gotta spice up the, 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 the show, dude. You have got to do that. AEW doesn't do a good job of doing that at all. Sometimes things will happen... And if it's not properly recapped, like, I feel like if I miss an episode of Rampage, I might miss something and they don't actually recap it. And because of that, it doesn't feel important to me. Like, for example, if you missed when Keith Lee came back, why even get invested in that feud with Shane Strickland? And again, that's another feud that started up a couple weeks before the pay-per-view. It's almost like Khan is like, oh crap, pay-per-view's a couple weeks away, let's hurry up and build some angles. No, you should have done that ahead of time. He should have his next pay-per-view already mapped out and then book backwards or at least have all the top matches already ready and slowly get there. That's one way to do it. I don't know what method he uses, but this is a guy who obviously grew up playing games like Extreme Wrestling Warfare or Total Extreme Wrestling and, you know, all these, like, pro wrestling booking simulators, which can be a lot of fun, but... In the real world, booking is not easy. You got to deal with egos. You got to deal with guys not wanting to put other guys over. You've got to deal with fitting everything to television. Like things are never going to play out the way you really visualize them. So I'm not saying it's an easy job, but clearly the problem with Tony Khan is he always wanted to do this for a living. And now that he has his dad's money to own his own company, he can live out his fantasies, which is why so many people, people describe him as having like action figure wrestling. Because it feels like he's just playing with his toys and booking play matches. And that's not what wrestling's ever really been about, yo. Even if you like work rate. Like, wrestling should be about angles and stories that drive more stories to eventually get to the pay-per-view where you get your payoff or at least the next big chapter of the story. Obviously, with AEW only doing four to five pay-per-views a year, 
It might be a little different, but what about Battle of the Belts? That show's wasted. Every every Battle of the Belt, except for the first one, it genuinely feels like they don't give a shit about it. They don't even book matches till like the last week. Battle of the Belts on Saturday featuring Jay Cargill versus like, where's like the story leading to it? The first Battle of the Belts that had the Hangman Page Adam Cole rematch was well done. You know, that made sense. But all the subsequent ones, I think that was the first one, but all the subsequent ones have been just nothing shows. Like, you could skip them, and they mean nothing. And that's not what you want. If you've got a one-hour special every three months or whatever for TNT or whatever the hell the story is, you got to give them something, even if it's just one big match. Instead, it's just a bunch of title matches where you know who's going to win, and it doesn't matter. And that's got to stop. Dynamite has to feel more spontaneous. That's what needs to happen. Khan needs to forget what WWE is doing except for one thing. He needs to learn why the bloodline angle is working. Why that angle is week-to-week storytelling where you have to tune in every week to see the next chapter. The bloodline angle has been the most successful thing WWE has done story-wise in a very long time. And so far, as of this recording, they haven't botched it up. He just has to freaking pick from that and say, okay, we have to tell a storyline with our top talent that is going to be a week-to-week story that's going to make sense and that's going to actually lead somewhere. And I think he doesn't do that. I just don't think he does that. I I don't like the way that Dynamite is booked. I felt like the peak of Dynamite was 2019 and maybe some of the post all out 2021 stuff. But every week I find holes in the booking and things that just need improvement. So there's just no way that this guy's actually a good booker. And I I can confidently say that. I don't think he is. And I've given you reasons to why I don't think so. He needs to really understand that If you want to grow your audience beyond the internet and the dirt sheet fans, if you want to grow your audience to actually getting casuals, you have to give people a reason to tune in every week. People who don't know anything about wrestling say, oh, you know, it needs to go back to TVMA. Not really. I understand why they say that, but not really. What they have to do is tell interesting stories again. That's what they have to do. Tell interesting stories. And AEW really lacks that outside of the in-ring wrestlers telling their own stories. And in my opinion, credit goes to the boys more than to Khan. I'll do a follow-up video to this at some point, but I wanted to just give my thoughts on why I don't think he's a good booker and why he's got tons of flaws he has to work on. Obviously, he's new at this, and he needs to really think outside the box and think outside of just being a predictable wrestling show and really start to hype things up for the better, and really work on selling us on the product. That's it. See you next time.